Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today we've got a bit of a different video for you. I'm not going to be painting any models today, but instead I'll be taking you through my entire collection of Souls prints and models to date. As mentioned before on the Instagram, I am doing a giveaway at the end of this video, so make sure to stick around to the end of the video to find out how to enter. So I have pretty much every expansion of the Dark Souls board game that there is. I'm only missing two currently, which is Manus and the Executioner's Chariot. You can see a Bloodborne box there, which I will be delving into and doing some Bloodborne models soon enough. Stacking these, I not only realised that I might have somewhat of an addiction, but I also realised I don't have that much space before I started knocking all my lights over. So let's go through all these boxes then. First up, it's the Gaping Dragon. It's my most recent purchase and it's not been painted. It's literally fresh out of the box right now for this video. It's an amazing looking mini. It does the boss complete justice. Now wait here. As the actual boss itself, you know, I don't think it's one of the hardest bosses in the game, but it's definitely one of the most memorable for sure. You know, the moment when it bursts out of the sewer and opens its mouth and you're kind of just there like, oh yeah, of course. Next up, it's one of the exclusive Kickstarter sets with a board game, and it's the Four Kings. Um, I primed these ages ago, but I never got around to painting them. They, they are one of the bosses I struggled with most on my first playthrough of Dark Souls 1. I can't remember how many times I died to them, because I just didn't realise that it was like a speed boss that you just had to just plough through them before they kept regenerating. Um, I haven't painted them yet because I've been waiting to get my airbrush set up, which I managed to do in episode 4 when I painted Yorm, so they've kind of fallen down the queue of my priorities to paint. Next up is another Kickstarter exclusive and it's the Old Iron King. I think Dark Souls 2 gets a bad rap because it has some of the best DLCs in Souls. The Iron King is an easy enough boss and it doesn't make him any less epic in stature. I just wish they added the Fume Knight into this expansion pack. You know, he's the true boss of the DLC. I haven't painted him because I've been waiting to get a bit more confident with painting fire and airbrushing in fire effects to, to take this one on. So he will be done soon. And the last of the three Kickstarter exclusive is the Guardian Dragon from Dark Souls 2. I thought this was an odd choice for an exclusive one. It's not the most memorable of bosses. I don't think it's even the most memorable dragon in that area. You know, he wasn't the most exciting to paint, but Deathkey still looks quite cool. I just feel like the Ancient Dragon, who's the real boss, would have been the better choice for an exclusive pack, but, you know, whatever. He gets little head pats anyway. Now for a real dragon boss, it's Black Dragon Calamite. This is one of my absolute favourites in-game and as a model. He was super fun to paint, and like the size of the base when I first got him, it was quite early on into my painting journey and I thought this would be a really good opportunity to test out doing some mini scenery prints. You can see some gravestones and rocks here and trying out grass flocking and foliage and stones and things like that and adding skulls in to redecorate it and bring this to life. Next up, we have everyone's favorite intro boss, the Big Booty Asylum Demon. Asylum? More like a side bum demon. Right? Right? Damn, boy, he's thick! Pretty cool, model. <laughs> Pretty cool model to paint. Um, I feel like the sizing was a bit off with this one because he seems a tad on the small size, especially when you compare him to models like uh, Vort of the Boreal Valley. Um, I do appreciate they still kept that thick old booty though. Speaking of Vort, I have him right here. Um, I can't remember why, but I do remember this being a bit of a rush paint job. Um, I didn't spend too much time on this one because I just wanted to get him done for some reason. But looking at it now, I think I'm going to strip the paint down and I'm going to redo him because I've been intending to do a better job with using a snow and cracked ice base and using um, Green Stuff World's liquid frost effects on the weapon. He's a good mini, he's nicely detailed, I just think I can do better. He can have some little pats too, why not? Now for the sad boy, uh, the last giant from Dark Souls 2. Always felt guilty fighting this guy. Actually, he was the last model that I used gloss shaders on, like Agrax Earthshade and Null Oil. 
Um, in my first year of painting, I relied way too heavily on them. Like if I messed up some painting, if I messed up some colors or messed up some details, I would just slap a load of shader on and just call it job done. And he was the last one I did it on because I realized that actually the paint job I did was quite nice and that when I slacked loads of shader on, it really dulled down what I'd done and I'd lost a bit of the detail. Um, that's it for the bosses so far. So moving on to the sets, we have the Iron Keep and this comes complete with the Alon Knights, uh, Smelter Demon and Sir Alon. This was one of the first expansions I brought because it really adds to the main game and you can tell from the simplistic job that I did on the Smelter Demon, it was quite early on for me in painting. Um, I think I can strip him down and give him a do-over to bring out more of his flame detailing and now that I've got the airbrush set up I can add some really cool glow effects and things. I think the Sir Alon came out okay on this one because he's got loads of cool details to work with so it was a bit more forgiving. Now it's time for my favourite expansion which is the Dark Root expansion. It's one of my favourite areas in the game and this expansion comes with some of the best characters from Dark Souls 1. You get Sif, you get Artorius, you get the Mushroom Bros and they are across the board favourites. This set also gave me good practice back then to try out different scenery to base them with. They definitely need some more glue spray over them because all of the grass was falling all over my desk. I'll also be reprinting my own Artorias and Sif at some point soon, whenever I can get to it on the list. The Phantoms expansion adds an interesting dynamic to the game. It allows you to get invaded and you can summon others, much like in the actual game. It comes complete with some of the best summons and some of the best invaders from all three of the games. Sellsword, Lewitt and Marvelous Chester being my favourites, I think. And you get a lovely little tiny Solaire and Siegmeier. How cute. Now this is the first expansion I bought for the game, it's the characters expansion. This gives you a much more varied range of characters to choose from. You also get loads of recognisable armours from across the three games. And these were some of the earliest models I've painted, as you can probably tell from the amount of shader I've slapped all over these. And the last expansion I have is the Explorers. And this one introduces mimics into the game, which makes it way more challenging. You also get cool little props to have on the board game, like gravestones and barrels, which were quite fun to paint. The Pursuer was one of the least interesting bosses I've painted. There's not really a lot much to him. He's kind of just one armor color. You know, I if I had my airbrush set up back then, I probably could have done the, um, the red glowing visor which could look quite cool, so maybe once I go back and start stripping old paints, I can look into doing that. Now for the main one, this is the base set for the game. They are my very first miniatures I painted, so please be forgiving. You get an awesome selection of enemies and an awesome selection of bosses. Some of them have been my absolute favourite to paint. The gargoyle has some excellent detailing to it, and it made it quite easy to look good, even though I was a beginner back then. The Boreal Outrider was quite a nice easy one to do early on, mainly because he's just armour, but again on the topic of you know stripping paints and going back to doing old ones, I think he would be one I would redo because I can go back and add some nice ice effects and maybe some, some cracked frost on the base to make it look really authentic. Uh, this was pro I think this was the first boss I ever painted, which was the Titanite Demon. This was a good introduction into painting because you can just dry brush the whole thing. Uh, Smell is a great looking mini. Sadly though, gravity does take its toll on his hammer and it started to droop as everyone on the Instagram likes to remind me that it looks like his hammer has erectile dysfunction. Sorry, gravity just does that. He also has his little pal Ormstein with him too. The Dancer was one of the very first bosses I painted as well. Um, I will also be reprinting, doing a bigger and better version of her soon as well, so look out for that whenever I, whenever I get to it. Fatboy Head, the Wing Knight, is a great mini boss to fight on the board game. I think he's one of my favourite mini bosses to fight on the board game. Um, I quite like how the base of this one turned out as well. You know, I think even early on being a beginner doing that, I think it actually turned out quite well. So that's it for the board game. As I said, the only ones I'm missing, which I don't have here, are the Executioner's Chariot and Manus, which I will be buying soon enough. Now for the printed models. This is one of my most recent ones. It's the Armoured Tusk, or Fangbor, if you like. I wasn't too excited to paint this one. I'd left it on the shelf for ages because it looked really quite basic to me. 
But then as soon as I started painting it and I added in these bloody strand effects, I actually got kind of excited to paint it and I got, I was pretty thrilled with how it turned out. Looks can be deceiving. Here we have the Looking Glass Knight from Dark Souls 2. Really iconic boss. I actually bought some chrome paint, I think from Stuart Semple. It's the most reflective paint on the market apparently, but you're meant to use it over light primer like Grey Seer or Wraithbone or Corax White. But back then I only ever used Chaos Black and it didn't give enough shine on the reflection as you can see. It also absolutely destroys your brushes, so you know you gotta make sure you use a really a cheap brush or an old brush but my brush actually fell apart a bit so you can actually see all the brush strokes left within the reflection which kind of annoys me so at some point I probably will redo him now for one I'm very excited to paint it's this super large Melina statue and as you can see she has been primed she just needs painting and I mean wow this this model is super detailed it looks awesome it's one I found on CG Trader so go check that out if you can go and look it up it's well worth it it's an awesome looking model and I'm really really excited to do this one now for my latest paint job Rani I love how she turned out I just stuck to wet blending for this one didn't touch any airbrushing and you will be able to see how I painted her next week as she will be the next episode Father Ariandal from episode 2. He is quite a low poly model and I'm going to be redoing him as I have an even bigger and better model of him that I will be printing and painting soon. Now for the fan favourite, Solaire. He was one of the very first characters from Souls that I printed and I think I can do a better paint and print job on him next time as this was a very, very, very early print and paint. I think it was from my very first 3D printer, um, so I can probably do him bigger, I can probably do him better. Here I have a tiny pot boy. Everyone has been pestering me and nagging me to do a large Alexander Iron Fist, which yes, I will do, so don't worry. Alexander is actually the next print I have lined up. Another Elden Ring favourite, it's Muriel the Pasta, or Turtle Pope as some people call him. I've been meaning to paint him, but I'm a little bit, um, what's the word, trepidatious, is that a word? I'm a little bit cautious of painting him, just because I need to do some more research into tortoiseshell patterns and how to like make them look realistic, because I want this to be as authentic as possible. So once I feel confident enough that I know how to replicate a tortoiseshell pattern, I will dive right into this one. Now for what I'm very excited to do is the Draconic Tree Sentinel. I loved fighting this dude outside the Royal Capital. When he goes supercharged and starts going crazy with lightning, it's, uh, it's pretty epic. Episode 5, we did the Twin Princes. Since that video, I actually coated them in some gloss varnish to try and bring back some of the shine that was lost on the model due to airbrushing. The airbrush kind of left it feeling a bit flat and a bit too like matte finished. Maybe I made it too shiny. Now the real OG of souls, Siegmeier. This is the very first print I did of Siegmeier. Since him, I've gone on to do dozens and dozens more bigger and better ones. Thinking about it, Siegmeier was the very first character I printed when I got my very first 3D printer. He's not that detailed because obviously it was a very early paint job, but I keep him in my collection because every time I do a new Siegmeier, it's really nice to compare and contrast them together just to see how far I've progressed. When you get better and you, your skills improve, you don't really notice in real time how much you've improved. When you have like a bookmark of your current skill level, it's really good to go back and compare so you can actually have a visual representation of how much you've improved. One of my favorite Dark Souls 3 bosses is the Dragon Slayer armor. Everything about this fight is epic. The only thing is I made this model to scale for the board game, but I think just because it's such a cool boss, I'm just gonna reprint him and scale him up bigger and better. The latest episode of the series was Renala. Again, she's another low poly model, but you know, she gave me some good opportunity to exercise my finer detail brushing. And yes, for all of you bugging me about it, she does have feet. Happy now? Queen of Dark Souls 3, Frida. I printed her at the same time as Ariandel, but I never got around to painting her. This one I printed for the board game and scaled her for that, 
but now I have an even bigger and better version of both her and Father Ariandel, which I will be doing, which will be very exciting. One that always seems to go down well on the Instagram is Grave Lord Nito and all his skelly pals. This one again, like Frida, I printed to scale for the board game. And as you can see, I also stacked him on top of these Citadel skulls from Games Workshop. And I really like how the base turned out because of it. I think it really adds a nice dynamic to it, makes it look a bit different. My next paint job, Mitha. Mitha? Mitha? I'm going to go with Mitha from Dark Souls 2. You can see she's primed and ready to go. And I'm just hoping that she's going to be quite a straightforward paint. I can't see why she wouldn't be. So she's the one next up to do. Another very early print and paint job with the wolf from Sekiro. Now I printed this in like 20 separate parts because I only had my small printer at the time and it took days and days and days, I think even weeks, just to print all the separate pieces and put them all together. Now the, the design does have like a gammy eye and it kind of makes him look a bit more Caucasian than Asian, which I don't like very much. Um, it kind of takes away from the aesthetic and the authenticity of it. But I was thrilled at the time to be able to print something of this scale with the small printer that I had. As you can see along all the join lines of the separate parts, you can see that they're quite apparent. Um, that was because when I printed and painted this guy, that was before I learned about model fillers and epoxy putties, which are really handy for filling in gaps, breakages, all these join lines as you can see. Ah, Quaylag. I loved creating the drool effect on this one back in episode 7. That was a great one. It was really, really fun to do. I think she's an epic boss. I think she has some really great backstory too. All that's left to do with her is just to design a fitting lava base for her to stand on. And then, done. The big chunk of Dark Souls, Havel, complete with his massive dragon tooth. This one actually printed quite well in one go, considering the size of him. Uh, he's not Souls, but he's as close enough to a Souls game as any game can be. And it is the Ghost from Hollow Knight. Probably the greatest modern 2D platformer out there. Genuinely a truly incredible game. I loved everything about this game. And I love this model so much that I couldn't not show it off. Now my favourite piece. The Limgrave walking mausoleum scene. This took me days to make and it was my first attempt at a whole diorama rather than just a model. Once I get some better tools and equipment, I'm gonna try and make a mountain top of the giant scene to test out using snow. And lastly, my mega yawn. We had to reshuffle the camera just to get him in shot. Just trying to print this guy broke my printer for months and it took forever to get going again. But I'm thrilled that I finally got him printed. I'm thrilled that I finally got him painted. And you can check out how I did it in ep four of the series. And that's my collection, guys. So thank you for, oh, you wanna see them all together? Fine. God damn, I think I have a problem, you guys. It literally took me to lay them all out together to notice that I might actually have a bit of an addiction to this. I guess the first step is acknowledging, right? The crazy thing is, is that I have dozens, if not hundreds more to print, like lined up to print and to paint. And this collection is only gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger until literally I need to get a bigger house to fit them all in. But that's it. That's my collection to date, guys. So thanks for sticking to the end with me there as I went through the entire collection. Sorry it went on for a bit of a while. There's a lot to get through. And as promised, I'll be doing a giveaway. Want to paint your very own Last Giant? Well, I have one brand new Last Giant expansion from the board game, complete with boss movement cards and health dials, etc. If you want to get your hands on all this, you need to make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Comment below on this video with who is your favorite model from the collection. I'll be announcing the winner of the giveaway over on the Instagram page next week, so be sure to check over there for more updates on it. That's it from me. I now have a mammoth tidying up job to do. See you all next time.